Hey, hey, this is, uh, we call this the uh, Memorial Day. Ha happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. Weekend, because it's not Memorial Day yet, but you might be watching this by the time it's Memorial Day. So, hey, happy Memorial Day weekend. It's an odd one because we're probably not all at the beach or partying, getting, you know, halfway drunk somewhere, but <laughs> we're at home. We're with the people that we should have a little bit of a memorial for, which is our family. So let's keep it together, y'all. Yeah, and we actually have a pretty special episode. Um, we're actually previewing a very historic event that's upcoming this week. So if yes. you know, if, if you're excited to know what it is and you weren't sure what we we're talking about in the title of this video, or if you already knew and you were really interested in getting a preview of what's going on, we're going to talk about, you know, a little bit about that today. So um, we're going to make a little bit of noise. We're going to make a little bit of noise about it for sure. Definitely. So I think uh, first off, we'll, we'll talk about the mission. We'll talk about, um, you know, why, why it could be important for humans in space in the future. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of different little things that have to do with spacex and nasa today so uh buckle up because you guys are about to be in for an interesting ride so we're gonna try to get through this today uh, as best as we can we're not experts that's for sure so yeah that's that's a disclaimer i was just about to make i was about <laughs> to say this is gonna be a very interesting episode by a few non-experts on the topic pretty but much. we do have opinions just like all of you. <laughs> so we'll try our best. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. So uh, I guess uh, first let's... Uh, the name of the mission is uh, Demo 2. It's a, it's a test mission, actually. It's the final test flight for SpaceX um, before they actually get... Before their uh, Crew Dragon capsule gets certified. So uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just head over to the NASA website right now, and we're gonna just read, you know, what basically what they want the world to know about this program and about this mission. So let's just head over there, and um, we'll see what's up. Yeah, let us have it. Let's check this out. It's a cool little animation that they got on their website here. I like that it's like the most immediate thing as soon as you pop on to their site, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you just get to see a bunch of rockets take off. So it's like, damn, damn what kind of action movie is this? <laughs> it's, it's very Michael Bay in right. the tamest sense. <laughs> it's funny. So it's, NASA it's and Elon. SpaceX to launch first astronauts to space station from the United States soil since 2011. So that's what kind of makes this a pretty historic event just the fact that it's the first time that an american rocket is launching american astronauts into uh into space from american soil so it's it's really big i mean it's uh almost a decade it's almost a decade it's crazy that we don't do it like we haven't been doing it i think that's the craziest part of the whole thing and uh so yeah i yeah i agree with that because i think that's that's the reason why it's not really as big, I think, right now. is I just think a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> like, a lot of people don't realize that we have not launched from American soil since 2011. If you told the average person that today, I think they'd be pretty shocked, to be honest. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know, shit, I, know, I already know my ass is shocked that, <laughs> like, I, I think about it sometimes that I'm like, man, like, we don't even launch our own astronauts. Like, how crazy is that? We're the first <laughs> to get to the moon, right? But we don't even launch astronauts anymore. Like, Russia was the nah. first pretty much to do everything in space. And they, they still launch astronauts. Honestly, Russia never stopped. How yeah, they never that? stopped. They never stopped. <laughs> Russia just... never stopped. They were like, we want to be in space for whatever reason. Right? I mean, they may have their own reasons, but <laughs> they definitely got the experience now over us. So I, I think that's where it's important that we, you know, I, that's why this mission is very important. First and foremost, that we need to become somewhat independent, right? In terms of being able to launch astronauts into space again, NASA can't do it because the budget isn't there, but they've done a very good job at tapping 
private industry to get this stuff done. And I mean, you know, we live in LA and we're very close to El Segundo and Hawthorne where there's a, a lot oh, yeah. of, of aerospace companies. It's not just SpaceX son, and Boeing and Northrop over there. I mean, there's a bunch of tiny different ones. No, nah, it's all over here. The Air Force bases are big out here too, bigger right. than people think. Right. But yeah, no, um, my son, my eight-year-old son wants to be an astronaut and we, anytime we drive by SpaceX, which is very often... I mean, you could see it right off the 105 freeway if you live in the L.A. area. I, I always make it a point to point it out to him. Like, dude, that's where they're building the, the stuff that is going into space now. <laughs> right. Like, that's just crazy. It gives me chills to drive by it. I know that might sound corny. It might even sound like I'm over-exaggerating. But that's the kind of space freak that I am, to be honest. And, yeah, I mean... I just think it's pretty the best the best way I guess I've heard it described that really kind of puts a little bit of just like anxiety, whether it's good or bad, right? And mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit of both from my from varying perspectives, but this is basically space race two. Yeah. And space definitely. race one ended basically when we shut down the space shuttle. But this is full blown space race two. And this is one of the biggest leaps to being like, we're way ahead. <laughs> That's true. In the football terms, it's like ahead by two goals, not one, <laughs> by two. Like this puts us up by a significant amount. And that's just crazy. I think the fact that that information is not out there right now and that enough people, at least that I know, like, what do I know? I may not know as many people as I think or whatever. <laughs> But I just don't feel like it gets talked about enough as like when the first space race was when the first space race was happening, it was man. And I understand it's COVID times too, but I feel like this is this has been going on for what about nine years, maybe more. Pretty much since it shut down, pretty close I, to. It. I mean, a little bit longer. I think SpaceX has been around a little bit longer than that. So. Uh, uh, and obviously Boeing and Northrop and, and the main players in the aerospace industry have always been involved pretty much from, from, right, right. from the beginning. So, I mean, that none of that has changed. I, I think um, the only thing that really has changed is America's direction, right? The way that NASA is directed to go in by the government. Right, because well, the, at the, the end of the, the day, yeah. well, at the end of the day, NASA is funded completely by taxpayer money. Right, so if um, it, if the funding isn't there, I mean, to go to the moon, to go to Mars, to to build our own space station, stuff like that, if that money isn't there, then it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, right? Because right. Uh, Somebody's going to have to pick up the slack somewhere and either it's going to be companies or countries that are going to do it. I mean, you see like Japan Space Agency is picking up and speaking of Japan Space Agency, one of their astronauts is actually set to fly on the next SpaceX um, uh, crew dragon launch, I believe, either the next one or the one after oh, wow. that. So. Um, you know, the Japanese space, space Agency is um, good. Obviously, Russia has always been in the mix. Um you know, China stepping their game up, the EU, United Kingdom, right? So everybody's kind of like getting in the mix. India, right? So everybody's getting in the mix. And um, right now is a lot more interesting, I think, than the original space race, only because now it's like, now you have way more competition in terms of like, I mean, I well, guess it's not competition because it's, it, it benefits everybody, but... Um, I will. I guess what you're trying to say right now is that this second space race is the also the commercial, right? Yeah, you know and I mean the commercial evolution of of just human beings being in space exactly. in general, exactly. And it's just like what that creates is like you said, competition. Meaning, there will everybody's going to be vying to get people into space now, right? It it mm -hmm. we've broken the next frontier. Oh yeah, you know what definitely, I mean? definitely. It's this is the it. new theme park is space, and for me, I'll just be honest. I am a classic sci-fi fan. I the 
to me, space has been romanticized to the max. Like, I believe in it. I love it. Of course, I mean, and take this all, you know what I mean? I'm a fan of going into space. I've always wanted to go into space, and I never believed. Even with all of that, I never believed I'd see the day when this would happen. To me, this is a sci-fi book. This is a sci-fi movie. What's yeah, happening? I mean, I mean, it definitely is. So let's actually get uh, get into what this mission means and what this mission is, according to NASA. So that way we don't uh, butcher it, as we're so fond of doing yeah, yeah. To many topics. <laughs> so we'll just uh, we'll actually Classic just OTM like uh, we'll, we'll we'll read the the legit version of this. So, a new era of human space flight is set to begin as American astronauts once again launch on an American rocket from American soil to the International Space Station as part of NASA's commercial crew program. NASA astronauts Robert uh, Behnken and Douglas Hurley will fly on SpaceX Crew Dragon Space lifting off on a Falcon 9 rocket at 4.33 p.m. Eastern Time on May 27th. That's Wednesday, right, I believe? Yes, that's one's uh from the historic launch complex 39A in Florida for an extended stay at the space station for the Demo 2 mission. The specific duration of the mission is still to be determined. Um as the final test flight for SpaceX, this mission will validate the company's crew transportation system including the launch pad, rocket, spacecraft and operational capabilities this also will be the first time nasa astronauts will test the spacecraft systems in orbit so they've done a lot of um they've they've definitely done a lot of training i mean it's a whole new system it, i mean I, i'm sure they've spent the better part of the last couple years in training for this so um I, from listening from the astronauts speak it seems as if like they're very confident and they feel very comfortable using the, the system. And um, most of the controls within it are touchscreen. So I'm sh I can only imagine being that I'm not a pilot, definitely not a Navy or Air Force pilot, and definitely not no test pilot, right? Um, <laughs> but I can only imagine that going from like you know a throttle and the and the and the joystick, not the joystick, but the um, you know the the flight the flight normal typical mechanical flight controls that you see throughout aviation history right like um, over a hundred switches and stuff like right. that to They're go just from going that to full automation to like, go full touchscreen right so everything is yeah. touchscreen um there there will or there may I'm not exactly sure but uh, they are capable of some forms of manual flight controls and they will be maybe um using those oh, flight controls near the space station. So that's something yeah. to look out for yeah. after the rocket leaves and subsequently once they get to the space the station. Most so the most important of those touch controls is being to maneuver the capsule so that they can get different pitches on it, especially right. for reorbit. Well, mainly you know for I mean? docking, so, to be honest. It's mainly yeah, it's yeah. mainly so they can actually dock with the space station uh safely and undock from the space station and realign their orbit in order to get back to earth so and that uh, baby's got eight engines in it <laughs> uh yeah so it's gonna be um it's gonna be pretty interesting i think in terms of this entire flight uh just not only from the liftoff uh first stage uh, second stage separation but also Docking. So the whole procedure all the way through is going to be uh, pretty interesting. Now, SpaceX has sent um, this. I don't know if it's this specific capsule, but probably not. Um, they've sent uh, another Crew Dragon capsule. And that was the Demo 1 mission, right? So uh, in the Demo 1 mission, it was an uncrewed flight test. So it's, it, it's the same capsule, but they sent it with nobody in it, right? In yeah. order to see to make sure everything worked. Um, they did set like some quote unquote records, I guess in that launch. Uh, they were the first commercially built and operated American crew spacecraft and rocket to launch from American soil on a mission to the space station. 
Uh, it was the first commercially built and operated American crew spacecraft to dock with the space station, the first autonomous docking of a U.S. spacecraft to the ISS, and the first use of international docking standard in the station and Crew Dragon's adapters. So it's, uh, it's definitely new tech, definitely new hardware for them. And uh, the, the tests so far have been passing with flying colors, at least from what they've reported. Um, before we started this episode, you were talking a little bit about the abort test. Um, that's interesting yeah. too, because, uh, when they asked the astronauts about that, they said that, you know, that's a, it, it's a great thing to have because when they were, uh, the space shuttle didn't have that. And these two are space shuttle astronauts, right? And we, right. we know, I was going to touch on that. Yeah. We know that ba the, based on the way that that they feel safe is like to add up to everything is like if these guys feel safe about it these guys are space shuttle guys right and they yeah. witness a space shuttle explode so they oh, know, yeah they know the actual they know all the things that can potentially go wrong and how dangerous the this mission is yeah the, impl the implications of any rocket launch right, right? exactly and the consequences obviously but the fact that there's finally like basically an eject button like almost the way an Air Force pilot has. Like, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's never even been heard of. But so, uh, but, but also I'd like to note that another thing that also adds to a lot of, the, I think, the reason why NASA is so comfortable with SpaceX as well is on top of that, their track record of also sending cargo ships up to the space station. They've done that over 20 times. Right. And, and so... Uh, the the this capsule is actually just a a different version of the same capsule that they use to send up uh, supplies cargo. to the space station, right? Right. So this is the crew version, and then that would be the cargo version, I guess. I'm not exactly. I sure feel what like classified it I as. feel like in many ways, like, and I'm sure people already get this, but the, all of those cargo versions were basically also tests you know yeah of course of course because we're willing to lose cargo more than humans always oh yeah we'd rather of not of but, course so but, um well one more thing i like to i i, I want to talk about is um spacex i don't know if it was spacex or nasa exactly but i know nasa obviously had the final say in who's gonna go first but I think they've done an excellent job in picking two very, very, very well qualified. Um, oh, and they're astronauts best friends, for this. right? So and it's like best friends. So it's a it's <laughs> they've a been good, in each other's weddings. <laughs> like I, you know, I have a really good feeling about this. I think you know this is great to have these two men, you know, uh, make history. And uh, so I'm gonna just actually kind of go into. Uh, I'm gonna just read about them actually. So. Uh, the actual commander of this mission is um, a astronaut ba Bankin and uh, Robert Bankin, and he'll be the he'll be the joint operations Bob. commander for the uh, mission, responsible for activities such as rendezvous, docking, and undocking, as well as demo two activities while the spacecraft is docked to the space station. So, um, right, he's just going to be in charge of that part of it. Uh, which is very, very important. Rendezvous is one of the hardest things to do um, in space. It Basically, all it is, I mean, all it is is you meet the other spacecraft up there, but that's one of the hardest things to do. So uh, he'll be handling that and also docking and undocking. And I'm not sure what activities, but I do know that there has been noted that they're going to be running some experiments in the capsule while it's docked to the space station i'm not exactly sure what those mm. experiments are yet so i guess we'll see as that news and information comes out but um if it gets released <laughs> exactly so uh yeah he he was selected as a nasa astronaut in 2000 and has completed two space shuttle flights Bankin flew sts-123 in march 2008 and sts-130 in february 2010 and he performed three spacewalks during each mission, which is pretty dope. Mm, that's impressive. Pretty dope. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, I uh, think so. so. That's my goal in life. Born in St. Anne, <laughs> Missouri, 
He has a bachelor's degree in physics and mechanical engineering from Washington University and earned a master's and doctorate in mechanical engineering from California Institute of Technology. Uh, before joining NASA, Bankin was a flight test engineer with the U.S. Air Force, of course. I mean, this is the dude, this is the dude they write family movies around. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good old American boy right there, okay? What, what about our boy Dougie? What's up with Doug? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Let's go down to Doug here. Uh, Doug Hurley will be the spacecraft commander for Demo 2, responsible for activities such as launch, landing, and recovery. So he's the actual flight guy, right? He's, uh, right. he's going to be yeah, responsible for some he's pretty like important the stuff too. Right. Yeah. Uh, he was selected as an astronaut in 2000 as well and has completed two space flights They graduated well. from the same class. Sorry. But okay. They graduated from the same class, same year. Right. So these guys are real friends. And just one added bonus, they're both married to astronauts, too. Both of their wives are also astronauts. That's actually a just pretty a, crazy stat. I like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So uh, they, can't, they can't lie to their wives. <laughs> pretty much. There's no BS filter. They're like, uh-uh, can't play me. <laughs> so Hurley okay, served as a pilot and lead robotics operator for both STS-127 in July 2009 and STS-135, the final space shuttle mission in July 2001. Uh, the New wow. York native was born in Endicott, but considers Appalachian his hometown. He holds a Bachelor in, of Science degree in civil engineering <laughs> for Tulane <laughs> University in Louisiana. See, this is just to, to let you know, you don't need no crazy double triple masters to be an astronaut you just got to have really good vision <laughs> you got to be able yeah. to uh you yeah. know you got to you got to have some have kind of degree, feet. obviously <laughs> you got to uh, have arches in your feet right. and yeah and you got to have some fight in you a little bit <laughs> and i mean that's it so we want good old american boys that's what i'd call these guys good old american boys is what you so, like like the stuff you're reading right here this is like american dream like uh monologue to like a great trailer or something not just living the dream these guys are awesome i love it all right so um i based on that information they obviously seem like very well qualified guys right i mean absolutely i think so <laughs> so yeah. uh just moving on a little bit here lifting off from launchpad 39a which is let me stop for a second it's Launchpad 39A is a very, very historic uh, launchpad. Um, many different uh, historic missions have launched from there. Uh, moon missions have launched from there. Shuttle missions have launched from there. Um, so some very important missions have taken place from that launchpad. So it's a has a Cape pretty Canaveral, big... Cape Canaveral, right? Yes. Cape it, Canaveral. It has a pretty big... Well, because there's a few launch pads there in Cape, at the Cape. But um, yeah, yeah. 39A specifically, um, I, I believe Tesla either leased or bought from NASA a couple years back in order to, you know, just have a, their own launch pad. Just to be able to be historic. Yeah, right. why not? Why not? Elon, you got the money. Do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I so, think. I'm not sure if I've been to that one, but I've been I've been to the Cape Canaveral Space Center before when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's I, cool. I have family. I have family in Florida. Trust me. I've been. A, I'm telling you guys. I'm a space fan for real. And it, I like, yeah, I want to get launched out there one day. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> All right. So, um, lifting off from Launchpad 39A atop a specific, uh, specially instrumented Falcon 9 rocket. Crew Dragon will accelerate its two passengers to approximately 17,000 miles per hour and put it on an intercept course with the International Space Station. Once in orbit, the crew and SpaceX Mission Control will verify the spacecraft is performing as intended by testing um, the environmental control system, the displays and control system, and the maneuvering thrusters, among other things. In about 24 hours, Crew Dragon will be in the position to rendezvous and dock with the space station. The spacecraft is designed to do this autonomously, but astronauts aboard the spacecraft and the station will be diligently monitoring approach and docking can take control and can take control of the spacecraft if necessary. So, okay, so they're, they are going to approach um, autonomously. So they're going to roll with the autonomous system and they're going to 
to to look at it basically to see if everything's on par if they see anything out of the ordinary or anything you know where they actually feel like they have to take manual control they will so that clarifies that question earlier but um uh, what's interesting, I guess, about this entire mission is um, we're finally going to be launching astronauts again for the United States. And this isn't the only... SpaceX, SpaceX isn't the only player in this game, right? Boeing has theirs, their capsule as well. You know, they're working on that as well. They're they're a couple stages behind in testing. But, at, you know, I would assume at some point within the next year and a half, maybe two years, they'll be able to uh, send astronauts to the space station as well. So at some point in the next couple of years, we'll have two companies being able to send astronauts into space from right. American soil, right. which is awesome. And how... And how long before other, you know, trillion, let, let's just be honest, let's talk about it in this sense, but trillion dollar um, companies or industries jump into the mix because Virgin Atlantic has always been a mix. And let's be serious. How long before Google and Amazon dip their feet in the water? Well, Bezos be already has a rocket company. It's called Blue exactly. Origin. And they were competing exactly. for the same contracts as well, but they didn't get it. So they've got, I mean, uh, they're getting, they're going to get other contracts like satellites and stuff like that. The smaller ones, like yeah. how SpaceX started. My point is that's how crazy it is for someone mm -hmm. like me, like a space fan. Like, uh, we're very, very close to a period in time where we could just be like, Hey, uh, yo, Nada, uh, I got a ticket to go into space next week. I'm going to go up there for a few days. I'll be back. You know what I mean? I'll be back by Thursday and I'll hit you up. Don't worry. <laughs> and to me that's crazy it's insane but it's also awesome at the same time like what like what Wait, I remember like the first time you ever saw 2001 space odyssey how crazy that movie was regardless of how old you were just, just like those scenes where like there's a spaceship docking into like some sort of space station but it's actually taking just regular people up there you know and you're just chilling up there on like a space station it's just a regular just rotating around yeah, it's like a hotel. It's like a little. It's like yeah. a terminal, basically. It's it a was crazy. It was crazy to think about at the time when I first yeah, it was, saw it too. Yeah, yeah it was right. crazy to think about, but it was, but it was also so crazy because it was so fantastical, right? That's and true. you were just like, and you were just like, that's so cool, but like that'll never happen, you know? Like maybe in a hundred years, and it's like, it's maybe been like twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Not since that movie came out, but I'm saying since. I got introduced to even the ideas of just space travel, right? Right. And it's just like, this is insane. You don't even have to be an astronaut to make it into space. That's pretty much what I'm saying. That's true. That's the world we are, we're, we're going to be living in pretty soon. That's true. And before, if you just weren't that qualified person, guess what? <laughs> you were staying grounded. <laughs> Thank gravity. We'll be there. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's finish up what NASA has to say here about this mission. So, after successfully docking, Bankin and Hurley will be welcomed aboard the station and, and will become members of the Expedition 63 crew. They will perform tests on Crew Dragon in addition to conducting research and other tasks with the space station crew. Although the Crew Dragon being used for this flight test can stay in orbit about 110 days, the specific mission duration will be determined once on station based on the readiness of the next commercial crew launch. The operational Crew Dragon spacecraft will be capable of staying in orbit for at least 210 days as a NASA requirement. So um, the, what's interesting about this mission, too, that I kind of forgot to mention at the last part is that uh, SpaceX will actually be attempting to land this rocket booster as well. So that's something also to look out for during the broadcast. Um I don't know where everybody's going to tune into. Usually I like to watch the SpaceX feeds, but the, uh, but the, um, the, uh, the NASA feed is probably going to be the best one to be honest in this case. So we'll just see, uh, I, maybe test, uh, maybe SpaceX is not even going to have one. I'm not exactly sure, but, um, anyway, let me, I'll let be me... on it. I'll be 
I'll be honest. I think the SpaceX one will probably be better if they have one. Usually because it I've is. Been, Usually it is. Because I've been following the NASA one for a long time, and I'll tap into it every once in a while. And quite honestly, it's just very terrible quality. They don't really care about yeah. it. But I think it's also because it's just public domain. Like, you could reach NASA's channel from anywhere and That's just true. watch it live. That's true. 24 hours. So it's like... You also can't be mad at it. Like, I'm like, I'm looking at space. <laughs> One cool thing about the SpaceX feed, too, is you can actually hear all the employees of space at SpaceX, like in the background. Oh, and Hawthorne? Yeah, yeah you can the hear Hawthorne them all base, cheering, like, and cheering everything. Like, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. And it, it's like, <laughs> like, that's kind of what I want to see is I want to see. Well, I don't know. They might be social distancing. It is Hawthorne. I work a block away from there and we haven't gone back to work nah, yet. It's, so. No, nah, it's definitely social distancing because I saw the brief like about a few days ago. And even in the uh, Nash, NASA like uh, media room, mm -hmm. they had, all of their seats were six feet apart. It was weird oh, yeah. because I was like, why is the camera so far away? Like, why <laughs> does everybody look so small on a broadcast? And it was like the camera had to be because they were that far away from each other. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, definitely. I, I don't think it'll be the same as like you think. But who knows? They, knowing the way things work today, they might have all of the NASA employees on like a Zoom call <laughs> just to cheer, dude. Just so we can hear them cheer. Because I think that's awesome. These are the guys that have worked so hard to get America back into space, people. Uh -huh. let, them, let them cheer and I want to hear them cheer. I wish I knew somebody. I can just call and be like, man, get me on that Zoom call. <laughs> Alright, so um, upon conclusion of the mission, Crew Dragon will autonomously undock with the two astronauts on board depart the space station, and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Upon splashdown just off of Florida's Atlantic coast, the crew will be picked up at sea by SpaceX's Go Navigator recovery vessel and return to Cape Canaveral. The Demo 2 mission will be the final major step before NASA's commercial crew program certifies Crew Dragon for operational long-distance missions to the space station. This certification and regular operation of Crew Dragon will enable NASA to continue the important research and technology investigations taking place aboard the station, which benefits people on Earth and lays the groundwork for future exploration of the Moon and Mars, starting with the agency's Artemis program, which will land the first woman and the next man on the lunar surface in 2024. So that's something also we get, we get to look out for in the next couple of years is they're, they're going back to the Moon. They they realize that yeah we got we want to go to Mars but look man we can't go to Mars unless you're able to go to the moon comfortably if you can go to the moon comfortably then the Mars moon is, thing Mars makes more sense the moon thing concerns me a little bit just because of just also the implications of just making it on the moon especially since I've heard our crazy president wants to mine the moon. Which I understand why, too. And I also think that, like, the way that they've researched it is, like, it's very possible without putting significant damage on the moon. But, you know, I mean, think about the name of our podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> the moon on is the very moon. precious to me. Yeah, don't touch, don't touch that thing, man. Don't tamper with that. Please. Please. But that worries me about that. But at the same time, I'm always excited about anything like that. Like, man, we get to go back to the moon. It's just crazy to me that we've never been back. That's what's crazier to me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, the whole what like what happened, like why like why did they stop? It's oh, there's money. a lot of questions. It's just money. There's Realistically, it's just but... money. It's very expensive. I mean, how much is a seat on the Soyuz rocket for one astronaut? It, it's about eighty million. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's just no big that's deal. Just, that's just the seat. <laughs> On somebody oh, else's rocket. No, like, that's and not even increased launching every time. a rocket. That's not yeah, even building, manufacturing, and launching a rocket. Like, yeah, that, that's true. That takes a whole they, lot more. So, and they've increased it every time just because they can. Like Uber, you know what I mean? If it's a hot weekend, you're paying double. You know what I mean? So, that's what sucks is that we've kind of never been in control of that. But also just the fact that. Elon developed, with Falcon 9, he basically developed rockets that are reusable. That's also something that's crazy right. that people don't think about. Oh, like that's we, nuts. The reason we didn't go into space was because it was so expensive every time. We had to build a whole new rocket. Like, we were just basically shooting billions of dollars of stuff into the sky and just being like, that's a wrap. You know what I mean? Like, basically, go grab your flat screen in your living room 
everybody and just go walk outside and just throw it into the middle of the street <laughs> and just be like, ah, right, we'll get a new one when we need to watch TV again. <laughs> oh shit. We need to watch TV right now. <laughs> oh, so, man. I mean, SpaceX has a lot of other things in the work as well, obviously. Um, besides just doing commercial payloads to the space station and delivering oh, satellites yeah. to orbit for other companies and stuff like that. They also have their Starlink program, right? Which is, which is, uh, controversial to say the least. Pretty annoying, it's controversial. It's, it's controversial because it's both like, you're stuck in a place where it's like, it's both necessary, but then like a heavy word that I keep bringing up is, is it the implications where it's like, oh, I don't know if it's worth it based on that. Based on the implications that it has if anybody knows about starlink he's basically nate could probably verse this better but i'm gonna do my best to do the layman's term but it's basically we're shooting up a bunch of satellites up there so that the well spacex is so that the whole entire world can have wi-fi fantastic but now imagine they're brighter than spacex thought so now imagine seeing the sky just looking like a bunch of stars moving around yeah i mean like a bunch of billboards in a sense it won't look that bad, but it's just weird. I don't so, like it. I mean, according to the website here, they're targeting service in northern U.S. and Canada in 2020 and rapidly expanding to near global coverage of the populated world by 2021. So, Is based, that still on? Though? I don't know. Based I, on everything that's happening? I don't know, but I know they have a consi- pretty consistent schedule of launching these satellites, and they've been on point so far. Nothing has re- – I mean – they they're not gonna they're not stopping for coronavirus. They're not stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean? that's true. I uh, mean, they're still launching people into space <laughs> on Wednesday. Right. Fair so, enough. it's a, it, yeah, it's very controversial. I mean, and it's only controversial to the people that actually care about looking up sky. in the night sky and seeing natural things, not man-made and- objects. And it's hard for people in big cities to even care about that because they've never witnessed it. As a matter of fact, I've never witnessed it, but it's been one of my goals to go into an area that's less light polluted than a major metropolitan area and just be able to see the Milky Way for once in my life. Like, I want to take my son out to do that. But if this is going to happen, I might not even be able to drive somewhere to do that because it might not even matter. Yeah, that's true. It might not even matter, and I never got to see that. How crazy is that? That's what freaks me out about is like, wait, I never got to see that. And this is about to go down? Like, no. But it's also kind of forcing me to plan that trip a lot sooner than later. I mean, that's still a very coronavirus-friendly trip. I might just do it soon, people. And if I do, you will definitely get some visuals for it. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. uh, besides Starlink, which I don't know if we ex- – did you exactly explain it? Right, You explained it, right? Like, I do you feel comfortable? as much as I – I mean, yeah, I, I gave basically, it the Basically, it's a, basically for, to get Wi-Fi up. Right. It's, it's just a satellite yeah, blanket that will cover the earth in order to beam down Wi-Fi, I think 5G speeds everybody. or something like that, to everybody. So, um, th- I, And that's probably going to be their way of financing their future, right? Because – if the quality of internet that you get from Starlink is better than the quality of internet that you get from your local ISPs, then I could see a big change, especially if the cost is right, right? Like if it's definitely cheaper and it works better, that's how the free market works, right? Like and I, and people are going to gravitate to that product, of course. And it will be because they got a great track record, but not only that, like I've already seen videos of people looking up and seeing those satellites <clears throat> when's the last time you looked up and were like oh there goes a satellite years You've ago never just yeah. i know but you were probably looking for it my nah, point is you never nah, i wasn't i was just happened to be somewhere like, really really dark where you can actually see all the stars oh for real and then you notice <laughs> ones that are moving and you're yeah, like and you're just like that's too fast <laughs> well not, really, too not fast. really that it's too fast but it's going in a straight line Right, like across oh, the sky true. at a constant speed. So you're like, what else could that be? Right? Ooh, I kind of regret not seeing that. I'm a little envious of you for that one. <laughs> well, you That's gotta pretty go, awesome. You got to go up to so, Kern River and be out there at night and just look up. I know, I know. Right. And I'm definitely going to bust that mission soon because just because of that, just right. because of Starlink. Like Starlink at least is making me proactive into doing <laughs> something I've wanted to do for a long time. So, hey, 
Shout so, out to Starlink for that, yeah. Another thing that SpaceX is developing is their SpaceX Starship, right? So Starship is what they're they're building basically to be what they use as a multi-planetary vehicle, right? So this is what they want to use to get to Mars. Um, they're currently building this, obviously, somewhat. It's still in development, but they're they are building it. If if you take a look online, there are uh, there's actually live cams. You can go looking on live cams uh, of their facility of them building it. Um, but what's interesting about where they're building it? They're building it in uh, Boca Chica, I believe, uh, which yes. is in Texas. And what's interesting mm-hmm. about that place is it's it's one of the it's uh, it's one of the poorest uh, places in the country. But it has one of the the most uh, the least amount of people that live there, the smallest population density, and it's right on the coast. So it allows them to test their rockets there somewhat safely. Uh, early on, they had problems with uh, um, like they had problems. So when they did their test launches. All the citizens that live there in Boca Chica, they actually have to come out of their houses in order, and just in case that the the uh, the sound from the rocket were to shatter their windows, so as to protect them yeah. in case they were to get shattered windows. So, what SpaceX ended up doing is they decided to buy everybody out that lived there, and they offered three times the market rate, right? But I believe the properties there. Like the houses only cost like twenty thousand, right? So you're paying three times that; it's sixty thousand, right? Like you're giving someone sixty thousand, but they live in Texas, and you want them to go to another part of Texas. Like, there's not very many other places in Texas where, you know, you could buy a house for sixty right. grand. Come to, you know what I mean? Come to LA, and you could at least get a Camry with leather. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> for 60 grand but it's okay yeah they, i mean that's another that's another point of controversy you yeah. know what i mean these are the casualties of innovation so of course there are sense. some holdouts based on that reason alone and spacex has been upping their offer i think the last time the last time i i i saw there might have been like four or five people left that didn't sell yet so SpaceX still trying to work that out, but that's where they're building their uh, Starship. And um, um, Starship is a little bit more of a while's away. Uh, oh yeah, they had a, they even had a setback as recent as February. To mm-hmm. be honest, Febru- February twenty twenty, they um, they had one of their starships get destroyed by undergoing pressurization. <laughs> And yeah, that's not good. Anything that's going to carry passengers just getting destroyed while undergoing pressurization. But they did work on it enough to where they made a new innovation. So it's like the failures that this company is having, uh, the implications that these failures are having are changing the history of our, of, of just our world. You know what I mean? And our future. Because by April 26, they had already built a full scale prototype that was able to pass a cryogenic proof test in which the ship's liquid oxygen and methane was replaced with similarly frigid but non-explosive liquid nitrogen. That's never even been possible before. So that's insane. Yeah. It's, it's maddening. Like, so it's like for every time you almost want to be mad at this company, they do something that's just like, wait a minute, like our bad. We're sorry that that had to happen, but it's like, the future's coming faster than I don't know. I don't even know what to think about, to be honest. Like in in terms of it, just blows my mind. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I love it though. I love it though. But it's just like I do feel bad. Like my heart goes out to Boca Chica because come on, man, sixty grand. Yeah. Like to get out of there, you're not going anywhere else. You basically got wrapped out. Like. Right really there. cash them out. Help them go buy a new real house. If you're going to take their yeah. land from them, go buy a real... Or just, yeah. Like, give them money to buy a real house. Exactly. Or SpaceX, just go out and buy them a house and let everybody that gets a house get some solar panels, right? Because you deal with that. And let everybody have a Tesla. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, like if you're going to kick me out, let me get a Tesla and a pad, you know what I mean? With some solar panels. Is that too much task? 
a little bit. It and- said little too much. Just a little Come too on. much. Come on. You just blew a rocket out my backyard, man. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. So so SpaceX. And that's just their stuff that they're sending into space, right? That's right. the name of the company, right? But there's so much stuff that's happening on ground that's very grounded experiments too right Mm -hmm. like the under like the underground tunnels right yeah the uh like well that's the boring company ain't it it is a boring company i guess but what it is really is no 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 i'm talking i'm talking about the one where he you can you can go i don't know if it's supersonic speed but um I'm assuming it is, but it's that speed tunnel that could send you from L.A. to New York in half an hour. That's crazy. Mm, I don't know anything that will send you that fast. but um, Right. It's you're, a talking of, you're talking about Hyperloop, tunnel, yeah. right? You're talking about Hyperloop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. Hyperloop. So Hyperloop, Hyperloop is just a pressurized tube, and the vehicles in the tube, like, they work on pressurized air, so there's no friction. They don't touch they don't touch any sides of the uh, of the tube itself, and it's basically propelled through to your destination. Basically, a spitball, your classic spitball. Now, you remember those uh, those old like old school pneumatic tubes where you have to open it up like at the bank and you put the thing in and it goes yeah. scoop. It's like that. Yeah, basically. At Costco, where they used to send a little whoop. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> it's like that. So uh, yeah, exactly. That's right. Costco <laughs> does have that too. Uh, <laughs> but uh so that's um that's basically what hyperloop is but what i think it uh what elon's idea is right now at least from what i've looked into is that he started a company the boring company uh and their main focus is to dig tunnels right his idea for those tunnels is um just a fleet of autonomous Teslas, right? So that you, you know, you go in, you get, you hop in a Tesla and it just whoop, takes you down through the tunnel through wherever you go. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that's like the first evolution of Hyperloop, right? And then eventually right. it evolves into once the technology and the manufacturing capabilities are there, at least in terms of like on a mass scale, then I'm sure then they'll move forward in the Hyperloop. And there's companies that are working on Hyperloop as well, for sure. But uh, I think, um, I think for the most part, like, I think Elon will get there again, also someday. Dude, like, does not cease to amaze me at all. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, he just keeps like setting not- the bar higher and higher for everything. It's crazy. It's and- like this guy read as many sci-fi books as he's read math books. <laughs> For That's sure. the problem. For sure. <laughs> what's uh what's That's... also crazy too, uh I know this is kind of off track and off topic, but uh uh Tesla is getting ready to announce a million mile battery, which is gonna completely change the electric car industry yet again. Because they're gonna have a long range battery capable of a million miles or so. That's like I mean, you know that's what, crazy. You know that's what that makes crazy. me feel like? You know what that makes me feel like, to be honest? Like, I feel like cars are eventually going to become like cell phones, right? right? Where it's like they're going to have like a two-year lifespan and everybody got to turn it in and get the, <laughs> hey, the- are you on the Tesla 13 yet? <laughs> nah, man, I'm still on this Tesla 12, man. <laughs> like, I'm good with it. I'm get good that with Elon it. 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You uh, on the Elon 13? Damn, bro. Next year, next year. I'm but, gonna get the 14, uh, don't worry. <laughs> so, like, that's kind of something that's on the horizon, too, for them. Uh, that's how that feels to me. And I would assume at some point, um, because Tesla did purchase uh, Maxell, you know, the battery company. Yeah. So, I have a feeling that at some point, Tesla's going to introduce their own, like, commercial batteries to people, right? Your double A's, your triple A's and shit. They're going to be fucking selling batteries, too, at some point. I'm pretty damn sure. I'm pretty damn sure. To be quite honest, like, this is the beginning of us, like, um, how we kind of first saw Google, where it's like, oh, they're a big player, but it's like, they're just a big player. But now they have, like, so much hands on just everything that Mm -hmm. just happens in the world. Like, that's how Tesla's... Like, years from now, we're not even going to equate Tesla with just being a space company. 
We're just going to be like, Tessa's going to be like stuff in your home. And then what, I, what I'm kind of curious of is, does Tesla acquire SpaceX or does SpaceX acquire Tesla? Probably Tesla acquiring SpaceX, I think, from a marketing standpoint. Because you eliminate mm -hmm. what I just said, is the fact that it needs to be a space company. Right, right. And he just, he basically hooked up Tesla, the real Tesla, for losing out <laughs> on all That's of the true. innovation he did. Right. He's finally getting his glory years after his death. That's but, true. But the name Tesla will always be synonymous with power, energy, and just exploration now, as opposed to Edison. Edison mm -hmm. now will always be synonymous with robbing us. <laughs> 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 so it's like, Tesla, you, the irony, <laughs> the irony in that is just wonderful. <laughs> just drowning it. Just drowning it. That's oh funny. Oh, my God. That's funny. A little twist. <laughs> a little twist, but the space age is here, my friends. Yeah. In the weirdest way. The new way. space age the is back. Way. In the it's weirdest back, way. boys and girls. It's to a point where, like, 10 years from now, like, it's going to be a real thing. I, that's, why, that's why I like that I threw it out there to, like, to kind of compare it to cell phones. Because when that, before that iPhone dropped, like, we, we didn't have phones that were able to get on the internet at well. You know what I mean? Remember when web pages on the internet were just like, you're just basically scrolling through HTML, like yeah. links. Basically, yeah. that's how it felt. And then that iPhone dropped, and then everybody went on it. And then the iPhone dropped not even what? Like, I th think it was like in 2008, 2007, not that long ago. And look where we are yep. now. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Just think about that if you kind of want to put those together. Think about where we're going to be in 2030 with space. Like, That's it's going to be a very real thing where we're just going to be like, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, I'm going to take spring break out on some space station <laughs> in orbit. You know what mm. I mean? It's going to be awesome, bro. Get your ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wow. You, oh, man. But, yeah, it's wild. I think if you guys have not looked into this, please look into this because it can benefit the minds, the the explorative minds of just anyone not just someone who's a sci-fi fan not just someone who's a space fan but also the science fan also the history fan also hey man you guys got time you'll be at home okay we know that wednesday tune in please at what time will that launch happen by the way nate uh i believe it you was know? 433 they're set to launch at 433 eastern time so that'd be what 133 okay. here 133 uh, Pacific, yeah. Yep. 133 Pacific, yep. May 27th. And by the way, I will say this. Another thing that launches that day is HBO Max. So get your that streaming That is right, true. Please. That is true. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I already pre-ordered it, too. I forgot. Yeah, I pre-ordered it, too, because if you guys pre-order, I don't know if it's still available, but if you pre-order, you get locked in at, I believe, eleven ninety nine For a year. A month, yeah. For a year. For a mm -hmm. year, which is awesome. Because uh, normally it's, what, a $15, 15 $16 something service? Something like that. Yeah, 15 Okay. okay. Yeah. So if you can lock it down for eleven ninety nine, maybe not. I don't even know why I'm doing a plug for HBO, but <laughs> I've just been an HBO fan for a long time. They produce some quality shit. I but if say. anybody from HBO is watching, we'll, we'll be happy to plug. We'll be, we'll be happy to <laughs> shoot the plug for you real no. quick. Or, hey, we'll no be happy plug. to be on HBO Max. We could premiere on HBO Max. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, get on the Joe mood Rogan on got on Spotify. Y'all could come get us. Well, yeah, we're not worried about Spotify. We want HBO, man. Uh, also, shout out to Joe Rogan for his massive deal. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's also historic too, in yeah. terms of podcasting. I mean, just in terms right of now. of internet media in general. Not even yeah. just podcasting, just straight up internet media. Like that is a game changer because and now the you, way things are going now. Well, now you monetize. Streaming? Now you've really put a number. So everybody is in agreement that he's the number one podcast in the world, right? So now you yeah. put a number. Now you put a ceiling on what podcasting is, which is you know there really wasn't no money there. I mean, it there's was a all the individual cap. money you were getting, but there, now we're going to start seeing something different that gives it professional validation. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just like, oh, that's a real thing. To be a podcaster no longer is like, oh, you just do podcasts. Now and if you just say, you're a podcaster, it's like, oh, are, are you guys getting views? <laughs> you guys making money? 
like, oh shit. And, yeah, it's uh, like being on the radio. That I mean, it was a huge, huge, huge win for them for Spotify. I mean, not only because obviously they're gonna get the subscribers and obviously they're gonna have the traffic. Like that's the obvious. Yeah, that's a win. But they won that day, literally that day, because their stock just went up ridiculous amount to the point where they they've earned more money than they spent on Joe, like ten times more, something like that. Oh yeah, overnight. And, and, it, overnight, literally just from the announcement, just from Joe making that announcement on Instagram. Not them, not them. Right, Joe. Right, exactly. Joe coming out and just exactly, doing it. exactly. So then, obviously, their stock went up. Now the stock is sitting up higher. They've got more money now, and and well, they're worth more money now. And um, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit for them now going forward, especially if they're going to be developing a video platform for it. Oh, expect to see Spotify yeah. shows coming soon. Like, well, yeah, Spotify is going to be your next streaming service yep. where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, remember when they just did music? Like, yep. what? I didn't even know they they're did gonna They're going to try to blow YouTube out the water, shows. but I guess just with shows, I'm assuming, I'm I'm pretty sure they're not going to open it up to yeah, the public but the, like but that. The, but, but the way you do that is because you already have a well, like, they've, they're already doing the music thing really well. Like, I've been oh, a Spotify yeah. guy for a long time. I've subscribed to them almost when it first started because they were one of the first music um streamers out there right. where i was like what you can listen to basically any album and yeah it had its problems in the beginning like where it didn't have licensing to like the top guys like for instance prince wasn't on there for a long time mm-hmm. michael jackson the beatles but they got on those licenses quick i remember it being like oh i can't listen to the beatles on spotify oh that sucks well whatever i would try to find them on youtube and maybe like a month or two later not years a month or two later it was like oh i can listen to them on there now and it's just like, so they were never playing around. They were really trying to do that right. And right. Give you access to everything. And I think they do it great. Also, like, their settings are great. You can master anything in terms of, like, you can set your EQ to any level you want based on the songs that you're listening to. You can create a massive amount of playlists. You could share playlists with people. People could listen to your playlist live. It's insane. It's a good music system. And if they're going to add video to that, like, I can't even imagine. Like, having a place where you can get all your media in one. You know what I mean, imagine they even let you play some of their music tracks while you can watch some of their stuff and mute their shows. Spotify, if you're listening, that may not sound cool in the marketing room right now, <laughs> but that would be awesome. Yeah, that's not awesome. going to happen. That's not going to That's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I'm interested to see. I'll probably eventually sign up for Spotify once Joe makes the move. I'm one of those people. I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to jump until it's time to jump. I get it. Yeah. Uh, there's Especially no, there's if you no can point. listen to music elsewhere. I yeah. mean, you're fine. I, the thing is, I already pay for YouTube, so listening to music is not an issue for me, to be honest. So, right. That's why I never got into Spotify because I've been paying for YouTube for a couple years now. So, well, yeah. That's well, never, that goes back right. to the same reason why I joined it, it like so early because it was the first thing way back in the days where I was like, what? Like, I, I didn't mm. even believe it when I first signed up to it. Because at that time, the only other thing you could kind of use for that was Pandora. Yeah, but the and problem with Pandora, Pandora is, yeah, but the problem with Pandora is you couldn't select which music. Right. You just had to be like, I want to listen to music based on this. Yeah, and then Pan, and then Pandora made the decisions, right? Yeah, and it's just like once I heard about Spotify, where it's just like you can listen to any album. I was like, no, stop lying. Yeah, you can listen to any song. Think of a song. You could go and find it and just play it. I was like, no, stop playing. No, you've been heard of that. That doesn't even make sense to me. No, 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 no. What's... These guys want to get. They're gonna want to get every little dollar, every little penny out of that song. Well, what's like, crazy no is, get free it, like is they pulled it off, and the artists are not getting bread off of that shit either. Not really. But they. But but. To, and I don't know the whole story about it because I know Spotify has also been in some controversies and some mm-hmm. shade. But I will also say this before everybody just jumps on Spotify in that way is that the 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 big music production companies were already doing that anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They were already shortchanging a lot of these artists. Dirty, dirty. I'm talking about making millions to maybe the artist making a couple grand. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whether it's six figures or less, where it's just like, what? Right. <laughs> like songs that people know, you know what I mean? Synonymously across the world. You would think these artists are were rich back in the days. Like a lot of these people never even saw money off of that. 
let alone royalties, you know, right. after the fact. Right. So, so, I mean, it's, that's a rough industry. That's all I have to say about, about that. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> rough. I mean, I don't even know how we got to this part of the conversation, but that's funny. Oh, uh, that's how we get. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, we welcome on the moon, we everybody. <laughs> Yeah, we gave whatever we got on the opinions of SpaceX, uh, but our opinions are vast and they're as windy as they get. You know what I mean? You're traveling up a mountain road with many barricades, but it's fantastic. Exactly. Welcome to On the Moon. Right. Yeah. So well, I mean, the other I, thing that, that, oh, go for it. Well, I was going to say, like, for SpaceX, like, really what's next is after they get this certification, well, as long as this, uh, this mission holds up and, and passes with flying colors. They get certified for Crew Dragon. Then they'll be able to, I believe they're going to be launching, they're going to be doing two launches a year, something like that, of, of astronauts to the space station to and from. You know, like they're going to be bringing people back and they're going to be sending people up. So they're going to they're gonna be replacing Russia in terms of uh, of using them as a, as a ride. So Okay. So SpaceX, uh, as long as everything seems to work out, it seems it, er, everything will be fine for them. They'll continue on, and they're doing crazy things. Um, what I'd like to know is if the next mission is going to reuse a rocket. When is the first? When's the first crew mission to to, to mm, go on a reused okay. rocket? That's what I'm kind of curious of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I, I know they're going to land this one, but I'm assuming that if they land this one, they're gonna, it's going to go to like a museum or, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not necessarily a museum, but like, like the spa- one of the space centers or, you know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna, it's it's going to go on display. I think it's going to end display. up at SpaceX Hawthorne, to be honest. Maybe, but Tonight. they already have the first just... one there. That's true. That's and they true. and they also have you know other places right they have other facilities too but but they might but they might just open it up to like more expensive tours after this you know what I mean mm, because like mm, we said this is the commercialization so. of the space stuff and NASA even has tours of their facilities yeah but like SpaceX facility is point. not that big in Hawthorne it's really not that big so there really isn't much that they could like I mean y- That's there's true. there's places you could go on tour there like but. Uh, it, the the problem with opening up tours to the public is there's just not enough space to accommodate for that at the Hawthorne facility. That's just and it's a, that's and, and we just don't know how things are gonna be going forward with all this COVID madness either. That's true. So, and I only yeah. speak about the Hawthorne Center because I've actually been inside there. I've actually gone on a tour there. So, yeah. like I I know it's it's not as big as you would think. Actually. No, and it. Which no, and even from weird. the outside, like it doesn't like the whole NASA center here in California is a, a whole like it's a whole it's a bunch of acres. There's a lot of land. Yeah. Like there's even free land to roam. It's mm-hmm. a nice place. You know what I mean? You're talking about JPL. So, yeah. 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 JPL. The Jet so, Propulsion Laboratory up in Pasadena. For mm-hmm. those of you if that you are wanna- curious. Yeah, and if you guys want to go on a tour for that, you got to sign up a whole year before. Mm-hmm. And that day, it's like a concert. I've tried it before, where it's like you got to keep reloading your page because um, tickets are opening up and getting locked in, and then some are opening up. But as people are trying to purchase for them, they get locked in. So it's a waiting game. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. People didn't know that. Everybody else is trying to figure out how to get into Disneyland. I'm trying to figure out how to get into JPL, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's my disney that <laughs> well i mean i guess unless you got anything else you want to talk about i think that wraps up this episode um i will just say one more thing is that the implications the final implications my favorite word of this episode we'll put a counter up maybe later but my the implications of just the commercialization of space though the one thing that does worry me the most is um for instance we just recently had an asteroid come very close which means very close is not as harmful as people think it's probably like still 10 times as far away as the moon and that asteroid was loaded with platinum trillions of dollars of platinum and the idea of us knowing that is that there have been theories 
amongst the companies, the, the trillion dollar, billion dollar players, to haul one of those bad boys to earth just because it's worth that much money. And that shit, I mean, I'm sure they're thinking about doing it in the safest way, obviously, because they live on the same planet. But, dude, that shit freaks me out. I don't think we need to be pulling in asteroids to Earth, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, the Japanese uh, space agency, they've actually, um, they've actually they've sent uh they've sent a a, a craft to an asteroid La right to land and, on an asteroid right? yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which is crazy so that means mm -hmm. that it's like it's not a far-fetched idea it's not as far-fetched as people think so that's what freaks me out about well, it more. it's they, just the fact that it's come up and it's like that's well, the thing and this was in this was back in 2010 that they launched it was called hayabusa like the motorcycle <laughs> they, 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 I didn't know that. That's why. Yeah, they landed on an asteroid, drilled it, brought back, and then they took the samples and they brought it back to Earth. So they show that that process, you know, the technology is there. Obviously, you just have to scale up. You know what I'm saying? But it's um, it's, it's freaky. But like I said, I know I'm pretty sure they're obviously trying to do it in the safest way, but. I still feel like it's one of those things that's kind of like, ah, oh, that's like one of those beginning of the ends. So, you know? you but they, there's Hayabusa 2, which they launched uh, in 2014, and it rendezvoused with a near-Earth near asteroid 162173 Ryugu on the 27th of June in 2018. It surveyed the asteroid for over a year and a half and took samples. It left the asteroid in November 2019 and is expected to return to Earth sometime this year. Thank you, Wikipedia. But uh, and, and that's how we got COVID <laughs> from an asteroid. <laughs> 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 Damn, man. Oh man, but see, that's wild. Like that kind of stuff is just like I feel like we're reaching a little too far right now. <laughs> like I feel like, like it's like one of those things like when you get a new thing and you just like push it to the limit a little too hard. It's like I feel like we're we're having a little too much fun with the new with the new toys. You know what I mean? All like right. let's slow it down. Let's sit with the technology we got for a second, and then we'll figure out how to mine asteroids. No problem, no problem. But space mining is never a good idea. If you guys seen Alien, you know what I'm talking about, man. And you Don't know there's this, there's so. giant diamonds floating in space. Did you know that? Oh yeah, yeah. There's diamonds everywhere. Like collapsed mm -hmm. stars that have fucking compressed so hard on itself, but didn't they got, turn into a black hole. They just they just turn into giant diamonds. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's how much pressure they underwent when they be basically supernova. Boom. Pretty crazy. Pretty. Crazy. And if that di if that diamond hits us, like <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap. That's the, yeah. let's just put let's just put that out there. If we get hit by a giant diamond, we're wrapped out. That's I'd rather get hit by a giant platinum rock. Hit me with that platinum, baby. <laughs> well, yeah. if you got nothing else, Chewy, I think I'm good. Nah, that's it. I've said all the space mumbo jumbo I've had to say. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe because it's such a historic thing. Maybe it's possible we could do a live stream for the launch. I'm not sure. Obviously, we'll work on our schedule afterwards. But, yeah, nah, this is all the space madness that I have to say for now. And I just hope that everybody's... A little more excited. Yeah, more honestly, excited, I man. think we should live stream that if we can. If we can link up for that to do it, I think we should. Just as like a... I think yeah. it'll be awesome. Dude, right, yeah. To be honest. Yep. I mean... So, uh, with that being said, that's this episode of uh, On The Moon Live Sessions. Uh, we pre really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching this show. If you guys are watching live, super appreciate it. Uh, be sure to like this video. Subscribe to our channel. Hit that little bell notification. Sell out. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're just finding this on replay, appreciate it just as much. Um, thank you guys for everything. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know uh, how good we are, how trash we are, what you like, what you didn't yeah. like. Let us know yeah, all give that. Give us a thumbs down also. Give a thumbs leave down a question. If, if, if you got a question... That you want us to answer in the next episode, leave leave it down below in this video and we'll get to it on the next episode. Appreciate it. Peace. And uh, don't forget to look up. Risk it Peace. for the brisket. <laughs>